Who is the Holy Spirit, and exactly what does He do? Many people find the Holy Spirit puzzling, mysterious, and even controversial. Why is the third person of the Godhead, the one Jesus said would be the believer's ultimate source of truth and comfort, be a source of such confusion? In this new sermon series inspired by Robert Morris from Gateway Church, Pastor Jason will clearly explain that the Holy Spirit's chief desire is for relationship, to offer us encouragement and guidance of a trusted friend. Move beyond theological banter, religious tradition, and cultural misconceptions to learn what the Holy Spirit promises to do in your life, dwell within you, be your helper, guide you into all truth, comfort you, pray for you, show you things to come, and never leave you. It's time to experience the Holy Spirit in a fresh new way, to meet the God you may have never known. We are in a series called The God I Never Knew, and I believe it's, it's very well titled because many people uh, don't know a whole lot about the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. In fact, is, there's just not a lot of teaching that has been done on this. In fact, is, we've been uh, a church now uh, for almost three years, and, and uh, this is the first time that, that we've communicated on this subject and really felt like the, that the Lord spoke to my heart about this and, and excited to be able to share uh, these things with you. If you weren't here last week, you can go on our Facebook page and check that out. Uh, but today we're going to continue... Uh, this series, uh, and, and today's uh, title uh, is, Is He a Person? Is He a Person? And I uh, uh, really feel like that this is an important topic, something that we need to be able to understand, be able to uh, grasp, uh, just to be able to understand the Holy Spirit uh, in, in a more powerful way. And so um, I want you to lean in today and really grasp some of the things that, that we're going to be talking about as we talk about, uh, is He uh, a person. Now, I told you that over the course of this series, we're going to be answering several questions uh, and, and what this looks like and, and uh, who uh, the, the person of the Holy Spirit is. Last week, we talked about who is he. We answered that question, and um, uh, it was really a foundational, an introductory uh, message to this series. And, and today, we're going to kind of build on that in talking about uh, is he a person. Now, the reason we ask this question is, is because of this. There are many uh, different theological persuasions, and I could name several, uh, that don't see the Holy Spirit as a person. Okay, They don't recognize Him as a person. They see Him as a, a force or a power. Okay, uh, And so it's important for us to recognize and to understand um, what Scripture says uh, along this line. Now, last week I, I told you that Scripture is very clear and says uh, that, that Jesus even calls him always he or him. Okay, The Holy Spirit is always referred to as he or him in Scripture, never it. Okay, And so it's very, very clear uh, in Scripture. We kind of hit on this a little bit, and we're going to talk about this more today, that, that he is a person. Okay, it, it, Scripture is, is very, very clear on this, okay? And, uh, and so today as we jump into this, uh, really, uh, I, I believe many of us already recognize or see him as a person, but we're going we're gonna, to uh, further understand this as we go through this uh, today. And, and why is this important? Why is it important for us to understand this? Uh, because if we don't see the Holy Spirit as a person, we will never seek to develop a personal relationship with him, okay? And, and, and this is imp important for us. You don't, you don't develop a personal relationship with something other than a person, right? Why would you ever talk to someone that's not a person, an inanimate object? No, we develop personal relationships. We seek to speak with and develop communication with people and uh, the Holy Spirit is a person. We can develop a personal relationship with Him. Now, um, have you ever had a, a, a thought or an idea that you think would really help God out? I have. <laughs> okay? 
Don't lie, you probably have too, okay? God, if you would just, you know, think about this, uh, it would really be good if you would just, you know, get this, right? You know, like we're really going to, you know, tell God something. Um, but but I, I, I had this, this thought, you know, concerning the Holy Spirit, and, and, and I, I just thought, God, I, I know why so many people uh, struggle with just understanding, you know, the, the Holy Spirit. And, and, and I just, you know, it, it, it's this. If God, if, if you would have named him better, then, then, then people would have, you know, it, it would be easier for people to understand the Holy Spirit, right? And, and I, I, don't dismiss it, okay, just yet, right? Because think about it, the, the, the Father, we don't have a hard time, you know, recognizing him as a person, Father, right? Um, the Son, we don't recognize, it, it, that, that's not hard. But the Holy Spirit, it just, it, sometimes it's difficult for people to be able to grasp that, okay? The kids are having a great time over there. Love that. So, um, ha, ha, you know, if, if, if God would just given him a better name, you know? And, and so I, I, I figured out, I, I told God, I said, you know, here's the deal, God. I, I think if you'd have given him a better name, and, and, and here's, here's the name that, that I would have gone with. If you'd have just called him Bill. It had been so much easier, right? I mean, because think, you know, it, it, when we say, I'm going to go talk to Bill. See? I mean, then, <laughs> you like, he, we see him as a person, right? And, and then, and then, see, all the real formal churches could call him William. <laughs> and then the, the really wild churches, they could call him Billy, you know? <laughs> wild Bill or something. What do you know? So... It, it works. It works. <laughs> right? No, but, but he, here's the deal. And, and here's what we need to understand. And, and I, I jest with that a little bit. But the Holy Spirit, and, and, and here's what we need to, we need to grasp. And, and many of us have never thought about it this way. But, but the Holy Spirit is not his name. That's his function in the Godhead. See, the Holy Spirit really isn't his name. You see, you've got God the Father. Right? That's his, that's his, he's the Father. You got God the Son, that's his, father. and then you've got God the Holy Spirit. You see, he, he, here's his name. His name is God. Right? His name is God. And so often we, we, we haven't realized that. We've, we've, we've kind of uh, jumped over this because of our misunderstanding or because of wrong teaching or, or, or whatever. Um, we, we've missed out on realizing that he's God. He's God. And he wants to get to know us. He wants to spend time with us. He is a person. Okay? He is a person. Now, what's the definition of a person? Okay? What, what, what makes someone a person? Somebody might say, well, life makes someone a person. Um, well, uh, a tree is living. That, that doesn't make them a person. Right? I mean... You can try to have a conversation with a tree, and you can talk to them, but <laughs> you probably won't hear a whole lot back, okay? Um, so uh, a tree is lit. So life doesn't necessarily make somebody a, a person, right? What, what, what are the, the quali qualities, what are the characteristics of a person? Let me give you, let me give you two definitions, a, a simple definition uh, and, and then a theological definition, okay? The simple definition is simply this. A person has a personality, okay? They, they uh, show the characteristics of, of a personality, okay? Um, and, and I could explain what a personality is, but, but you can see there the root word of that is person, right? Now, let me give you a theological definition. Um, a person has a soul, okay? They, they have a soul, all right? Now, if you study Scripture and, and you look, and over hundreds and hundreds of years, people have, have delved into this and, and looked at this and... and the soul is made up of three parts, okay? Made up of three parts, the mind, will, and emotions. And we did this teaching in, in our growth class uh, a, a little while back, and so some of you know what I'm talking about here. Uh, our, our soul is made up of our mind, will, and our emotions, okay? We think with our mind, we desire with our will, and um, what was the other one? 
I went blank. Oh, we feel with our emotions. Sorry, okay? So we, we think with our mind. Okay? We desire with our wills. And we feel with our emotions. Okay? Our mind, will, and emotions. Now, is it possible, is it possible, because the Holy Spirit is a person, that he wants to help us think like God thinks, desire what God desires, and feel what God feels. You see, the Holy Spirit is a person that we can get to know, and he wants to help us along these lines. He wants to en enable us and empower us to be able to do what he it, what God has called us to do and what he's purposed for us to do. He is a person, and so he speaks to us. See, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. When we invite the, the, the Lord to be the Lord of our life, the Holy Spirit lives, and he wants to help communicate and, and show us the, the thoughts, the desires, and, and the feelings that God has for us and for others. Amen? And so this is, this is important for us to grasp, important for us to, to understand, and so I want to show you today um, what what Scripture sh says about this, and how um, uh, we're going to kind of navigate and explore a little bit further uh, these three points. Okay, the mind, will, and emotion. So the Holy Spirit, first of all, He has a mind. Has a mind. Let me show you John sixteen thirteen. However, when He, the Holy Spirit, has come, He will guide you into all truth. Now, how could he guide us into all truth unless he has truth, unless he has knowledge of the truth, right? He has knowledge. He knows what the truth is, and so he has a mind, and so he knows the things that we uh, would like to know, and he can help communicate those things to us. He knows it because he has knowledge. He is omniscient. We see that in scripture. What, is, what does omniscience mean? Okay, omni simply means all. Science means knowledge. He has all knowledge. Okay, now I don't know if you've ever thought about this before, kind of another one of those weird thoughts. Okay, uh, but what is God's IQ? You ever thought about that? What is, what is God's IQ? Um, you know, people uh, uh, across history have had incredible IQs. Albert Einstein's IQ was like 209, okay, I think. Um, that's just a few points higher than mine. <laughs> About 100 points higher than mine, okay, almost. So, <laughs> yeah, don't laugh at that, and I'm. So, <laughs> but, but think about, what, you know, what is God's IQ, Okay. This, this, this may blow your mind a little bit, but God has no IQ. No IQ. You know why? Because you can't measure his IQ. You know what quotient means? It's, it's simply a standard or ability to be able to measure. You can't measure God's eye, his intelligence. There's no way to measure that. Okay? And it doesn't mean he doesn't have it. He has intelligence. The fact is, he has all intelligence, right? But there's, there's no way... To, to measure that, um, now, w w where am I going with this? Listen, I I'm not necessarily today trying to convince us that, that the Holy Spirit is a person, okay? I believe that most of us believe and understand that. What I am trying to do today is help us to understand the benefits that come from the Holy Spirit being a personal individual, someone who wants to have a personal relationship with us, Okay? And so when we understand that he has all knowledge, all the things that, that we could ever want to understand, he knows those things. You see, when we understand that he's a person, we realize we can have a personal relationship with him, and then we can, we can speak to him, and he can speak to us, okay? Um, I can remember when I was younger, um, I, I grew up in a, in a Christian home, grew up in, with parents who uh, were... were very good at teaching us uh, the things of God, and, and I'm thankful for that to this day. And I can remember mom and dad exampling those things to us. Um, and I can remember one time uh, I, had, I had lost, um, I think it was my ball glove. Um, if, if, 
if I, I'm pretty sure it was my ball glove, okay, uh, which was really important to me when I was in high school. I, I was, got a, had a ball game that day. I'd set my ball glove somewhere, had no idea where I put it, and I was not going to get to play if I didn't have that, okay? And I was, I was in, in, you know, like ninth or 10th grade at the time, and I was looking all over the house, all over the house. And, and my mom was helping me with this, and I was trying. I was in a hurry. I had to get to school. Where's my ball glove? And so we're looking. We're looking all, you know, all through the house. And, and so mom just said, come here. Um, let's pray real quick. Holy Spirit, help us know where this ball glove is in, in Jesus' name. And then we just we kept looking, okay? And, and so we're, we're kind of walking around looking, and I'm like, where did I have it last? Where, where was it, you know? And, and then I just had this, this, this feeling, this sense. You, you probably know what I'm talking about, where it was just like, why don't you ask me where it's at? You know, it's just, the, the, you know, the Holy Spirit just kind of talking to my heart, just, hey, why, why don't you ask me where it's at? Do you think I know where it's at? I'm like, well, yeah, but you're not being a whole lot of help right now, you know? <laughs> and, and I was like, well, he, I felt him just kind of say, well, why don't you ask me where it's at? And, and you know, I thought, well, that's mom and dad's job, you know, I don't, yeah. and, and, and so I thought, okay, you know, and, and I was just, I was like, Lord, where, and, and immediately I thought, you know what, as soon as I got home from school yesterday, I went out, my, my dad was in the middle of building this house um, that they uh, would eventually live in, and we, that we would spend a lot of time, in. and, and, and so, uh, it was it was still under construction. I remember going out and talking to him, and I remember I had my ball glove with me there, and I thought, I bet that's where it's at. And so I went out there and walked right to it, right where it was at. And and it was just it was just something that the Holy Spirit kind of put in in my heart. Listen, I, I I know the things that that you're asking. I know the things that you're in need of. If you'll just ask me, and it was an important lesson to me at the, at the moment of. Hey, why don't, why don't you just ask me? Now listen, there's been many times since that, that I've failed in that area. But here's what I want you to know, is that the Holy Spirit is a personal God, and He wants to work with us. He wants to be our teacher. He wants to help us and to show us and to be able to uh, guide us, Scripture says, into all truth. But we have to be willing to ask, okay? So, the Holy Spirit has a mind. Secondly, He has a will. He has a will. Uh, Acts 16.6 says this. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word of God in Asia. Okay, So at this time, the Holy Spirit forbade them to go into this region, probably because it wasn't safe. Now later, they would go into Asia and preach the gospel. But at this point, uh, they, they could not. Okay, the Holy Spirit wouldn't let them go. Now, have you ever, um, with your children, have you ever forbidden them to, you know, whatever, eat, uh, you know, candy, dessert right before dinner? Okay, you ever forbidden them to do that? Okay, I know I have. And sometimes you have to take them in the other room and forbade them, you know. But, um, so, what, 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 what are we doing? So, forbid means uh, to exercise your will. Okay? It means to exercise your will. And so what the Holy Spirit was doing here was he was exercising his will upon them and, and encouraging them, listen, it's, it's not okay. It's not okay to do this right now. It's not okay to go there. And later they would, but at this point he's saying, listen, that, that's, that's not what I want you to do. He's, he's exercising his will upon them. So since he has a will, why, why is that important to us? And since, since he has a will, since he knows the will of God, because he is God, and since we want to know the will of God, then shouldn't it be important for us to get to know the person who knows the will of God? Absolutely. Let me, let me say it another way. If you would like to know God's will for your life, get to know God. Okay? The person of the Holy Spirit. It's important to know that because why? God wants you to know his will for your life. He's given us the Holy Spirit to help lead us into that. Many times we just don't ask. Many times we don't know the person who can help us to be able to get there. And it's important for us to understand this. Listen, this is the number one question that, that believers have. People that come to know the Lord, uh, 
young in the Lord, whatever, many people, and I've had it asked to me many times, you know, how, how, how am I supposed to know God's will for my life? How am I supposed to know what God wants me to do? How am I supposed to know, uh, you know, this, this decision that I need to make? How am I supposed to know what, what, where, where I'm going or what I'm supposed to do? How am I supposed to know that stuff? Okay? It's, it's by knowing the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, th- there are two ways to know the will of God. Okay? There's two ways to know this. There's, there's the general will of God and the specific will of God. Okay? The, the, the general will of God we know by his word. Okay? The specific will of God we know by his voice. Okay? So the, the, the general will of God comes to us as we spend time in the word of God. As we get to uh, know and dig in and, and, and spend time reading God's word, he begins to give us his general will. Okay? How do I, how do I you know, be a good husband? Uh, you know, how do I manage my finances well? How do, my, how do I uh, you know, teach my kids? Uh, th- th- there's, there's different things generally that we can learn out of God's Word. Okay? And, it, and it's important to be able to understand. It's important to spend time in God's Word. But if we want to know the specifics of something then we need to go to God. We need to hear God's voice. If, 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 if I want to know, you know who it is that I'm supposed to marry, there was, when I was in college, I was praying. In fact, is when I was pretty young, mom and dad taught, taught us boys, listen, you need to start praying for your spouse right now. Okay? And so when I was young, I was praying, God, I thank you that you have the perfect someone for me, God, that you're, you're watching over, protecting, keeping them, God, and you're, you're training them and preparing them for our relationship together. I prayed that when I, when I was still very young. It was, it was instilled in me. It was taught in me. Uh, I can go into more detail with that later, but um, uh, that was just something that, that uh, I learned growing up and, and began to do. Now, when I got old enough, and it was, it was time for me to begin looking for that one that God had for me, Listen, I couldn't go to God's word and say, you know, where it says Jason Williams will marry Jen Miller, okay? It's not in there, right? Now, the general will of God is as far as, you know, how do, you, do I need to be a good husband? How do I need to be a good parent? Those things are in there, okay? But the specifics, we need to hear God's voice, okay? And so uh, I, I was able to hear God's voice on, on who it was that I was supposed to, and I got the perfect one. Perfect one. Kudos. Okay. You got to tell her I said that. Okay. So, so here's the deal is the specifics aren't in there. Okay. You have to hear God's voice. You have to know what it is that's God's saying to you. How do we do that? We get to know the person of the Holy Spirit. For instance, if, if you want to know uh, what to pray, it's in there. Okay. God, teach us how to pray. If you want to... Excuse me, let me say that again. If you want to know how to pray, it's in there, right? God, teach us how to pray. If you want to know what to pray, it's not in there, okay? The fact is, none of you know what to pray. Somebody just got offended right there. (laughs) You're like, I know what to pray. What are you talking about? No, no, no. Let me tell you, you don't know what to pray, okay? Let me show you a scripture (laughs) that explains this. um, Romans 8, 28 says this, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, uh, to those who are called according to his purpose. Right? We've all heard that scripture before, or many of us have. Okay? All things work together for good to those who are called according to God's purpose. Okay? And we've said that, we've quoted that. All right? But let's go back a couple of verses and read what it says here. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses because, hey, we're weak as people many times. For we do not know what we should pray. What did I just say? We don't know what we should pray. Hey, okay? We don't know. And, and, and you're like, well, yeah, I usually do know. No, no, you don't, smarty pants. It's right there in Scripture. Okay? Don't argue with what the Bible says. You don't know what to pray unless the Holy Spirit helps you, okay? We don't know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself, himself, he's a person, 
makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind... What was point one? He has a mind, right? He knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to what? The will of God. He has a mind, he has a will. Okay, And here's the thing. He wants to help us to be able to know what the mind and the will of God is for us. If you want to know what the mind, what the will of God is, you have to get to know the person of the Holy Spirit, the person who wants to teach you, who wants to lead you into all truth. Okay, We have to get to know the person of the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, there was a time in, in Scripture... Okay, and I could, I, could, I could dive into this more, but I don't have time today. But there was a time in Scripture when, when no one could hear the voice of God. Okay? No one. For 400 years, nobody that we know of heard anything from God. There was, there was a, an even longer period of time when only one person could hear for the whole nation of Israel. Okay? Here's the thing. Here, why am I saying that? Because, listen, we live in the greatest time in the history of earth because all we have to do is go to God and he can communicate to us directly. We don't have to go to somebody else to hear God for us. We don't have to go and get somebody else to make us in right standing with God anymore. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit and we can speak to God ourselves and we can know what God's plan for our lives. We can know how, how uh, we're supposed to deal with situations and circumstances and the, and the challenges that we face in life. We can know those things. Why? Because we can know the person of the Holy Spirit ourselves directly. That's good news. And I'm preaching way better than you're letting on. Come on. That's good stuff right there. Come on now. Listen, it's important that we know God and it's important that we hear the voice of God. Okay? And, and, and again, I'm going to get into this more later, but, but hearing God is an important thing. When, when, I was, when I was playing ball uh, in, in high school and college, um, I always knew when my parents were in the stands because my mom was louder than everybody else, okay? Now, nobody else on my team could hear her, but I could. You know why? Because I knew her voice. I had grown up hearing her voice all my life, and I could hear her. And, and when she spoke, you know, I was just in tune because I knew her voice. I could hear it. Above everything else, above all the yelling and cheering and all that, I can hear her voice. Here's the deal. you got to get to know the, the person of the Holy Spirit so you can hear his voice. Above all the other distractions, all the other things going on in life, you got to get to know him. you got to get to know him. How do we do that? We spend time with him. We spend time seeking him and praying so that that voice becomes more and more clear as we spend time with him. He has a will. He wants us to know that. He has a mind. He has a will. Thirdly, he has emotions. Okay, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And I want you to, to, to recognize here, as I read this, the, the emotions that we see. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Listen, love is, is, is a human, a personal emotion, right? It's, it's a characteristic of a person. Love, joy, a, a person has joy, right? Right? Peace. It, it, again, a person exhibits peace. Long-suffering, kindness. A, a person is kind. Do, do you understand what I'm saying here? You get where I'm going with this? Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. These are the characteristics of a person. It says they're the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Okay? They're the fruits, they're the benefits from, that come to us in knowing the person of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And when we get to know him, those are the, the characteristics, those are the benefits that we begin to emulate as we spend time and get to know him. Why? Because he is a person. As we get to know him, we get to know the, the, the qualities, the characteristics of the person of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.30 says this, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Grief is is a human emotion, right? And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You see, the Holy Spirit has feelings. And believe it or not, we can, we can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can, we can hurt the feelings, if you will, of the person of the Holy Spirit, okay? We, we, can, we can grieve Him 
And, and this is something that, that is, is very important for us to grasp. We can, we can grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, when, when, we, when we read this here in verse 30, to, to get the full context and really understand how we grieve the Holy Spirit. Because, listen, if, if, if we knew that there was a way for us to grieve the Holy Spirit or to make Him sad then we would want to know, as, as followers of Christ, how do, we, how do we avoid that, right? How do we not grieve the Holy Spirit? And so, uh, many times in Scripture, to, to understand one verse, you need to read the verses before and after it to be able to understand what, what it's saying there, okay? And so, let's, let's look a, a little bit before and a little bit after this verse to be able to get the full context here. Verse 25. Therefore, putting away lying. Listen, Lying grieves the Holy Spirit, okay? It grieves the Holy Spirit. Put away lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer. Stealing grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves the heart of God. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands uh, what is good, that he may have something to give him who is in need. Listen, not giving grieves the Holy Spirit. Did we know that? Did you, did you, when, we, when we have the ability to give and we don't, it grieves the Holy Spirit. And we should work with our hands, it says, so that we can give because that pleases the holy spirit let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth it that, that grieves the holy spirit but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers and do not grieve the holy spirit of god by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption but it goes on let all bitterness wrath anger clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice why because that grieves the Holy Spirit, and be kind to one another. That's a, that's a human emotion to one another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God forgave us through Christ Jesus. Listen, we can grieve the Holy Spirit, and, and, and let me just break this down in a nutshell. How do we grieve the Holy Spirit? Sin grieves the Holy Spirit. Okay, sin simply means missing the mark, and we miss the mark, and when we choose to walk away from God by living in sin, what do we do? We're, we're grieving the Holy Spirit because we're separating ourselves from Him. He wants that relationship. He wants to spend time with us. And when we sin, it separates for us from Him and it grieves Him. Okay? It, it, it's, it's the loss of intimacy. Okay? It, it, it causes separation and it causes us to be apart from Him, which grieves Him. Okay? Okay? Uh, imagine a, a, as a parent, okay, to be, to be separated unwantingly fr from a child, either, you know, through death or, or you know, distance. It, it, it can be grieving to us. And if we, if we know Christ and, and, and we know that we'll see them, we'll be together with them again in heaven. Listen, we still grieve here on earth. Why? Because We've lost intimacy. We can no longer spend time with them here on earth. And so we're, we're separated from them. We lose intimacy with them, and we don't have that, that connection like we did when they were here on earth. Okay? Here's the deal. When we sin against God, we sin against the Holy Spirit, what do we do? We separate from Him, and we lose intimacy, and that grieves the heart of God. Why? Because He loves us. And he wants to know us. He wants to spend time with us. Why? Because he wants to lead us into all truth. He wants to help us. He wants to teach us and show us how to navigate life. And listen, it's important to us, for us to grasp this. Because so, so many people miss this. So many people miss understanding that, that we have somebody that, that is here with us that can help us on a regular basis, know what to do, what to say, how, how to deal with this, this challenge, this difficulty that we're going through. And, and so many times I hear people, you know, say, I just don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. Well, listen, that's the Holy Spirit. Get, get to know Him. Because He wants to be 
your helper. He wants to be that teacher that guides you into all truth. Let me, let me give you some personal example here um, as, I, as I close out this morning, okay? Listen, many of you uh, know us, know our family, uh, know uh, the, the dynamic within our family. Um, when, when Jen and I, after we had our first two kids, we were like, we got this parenting thing down, okay? We're going to write a book. We got this. Um, and, and, then, and then our third came along, Talon, uh, just, just incredible, incredible young man. But he, he, he has his challenges, um, and, and, and we're praying with him about that. But, but Talon was, was diagnosed with, with autism, a mild case of autism. And um, uh, we're, we're, we're believing God, praying, standing on his word, and believing for healing, and believing that, that he's going to be able to do all that God's called him to do and purpose for him to do, okay? Um, but uh, I, I'm thankful each and every day for the strength to be able to, to deal with the challenges that, that he struggles with. And it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Um, and we didn't know a lot about it in, until we were faced with it. And, and often that's the case in life, right? When we're faced with, with a challenge, we have to learn how to, how to deal with that. And I'm so thankful that, that God has walked us through so many things as, as, we've, as we've dealt with this and as he's grown and, and as he continues to grow. Um, and, and I can remember, you know, several different times our kids coming to us and, and asking us questions, you know. Some of those questions, you know, are great and we know how to answer those. There's other questions that are a little more, more difficult and you're like, and I, you know, God, I need your help to be able to answer this. And then there's some that I'm just like, I'm not going to answer. Go, go ask your mom about that one, you know. <laughs> Um, but but it, it's 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 a challenge, right? If you have if you have kids, you know that there's 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 difficulty in being able to, to to steer them and teach them and help them. And 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 here's what I know: wouldn't be able to do it without the Holy Spirit. And and th there's been several times that that we've had to, to struggle with this. Um, and and just you know, kind of to give you the heart of a parent in this struggle. Um, you know, we, we just had to walk through it with, especially with Talon. And I remember one time, you know, going to the school and, and their, their, their artwork and, and, and work is up on, on, a, on, a, on a board there. And, and Talon's is noticeably, you know, less good than the others, if I can say it that way. And, and, and even he recognized it because later he comes home and he says, you know, Mom, I'm not smart like the other kids because their work looks better than mine. How, how, do, you, how do you deal with that? with a kid who's, who's struggling with that in that moment. It, only the Holy Spirit. You know, and, and, and you begin to, to, to show them and teach them and listen, you're, you're telling you're gifted. Gifted beyond measure. But it might be a little bit different than everybody else's. It just might be a little bit different. That's all. I remember Jen describing on Facebook uh, a conversation she had with Talon. Maybe some of you saw this um, a while back, but Talon heard some of the kids at school talking about autism and describing him with that. And he comes home and he's like, Mom, what, what's, what's autism? What is that? And the kids at school are saying that that's what I've got. And so in, in that moment, Holy Spirit comes. And Jen's like, well, buddy, you're, you're, it's, it, what all that means is your mind works so much faster than all the other kids. And she said, you know, you're favorite superhero flash and he lights up yeah flash he's my favorite well you know how flash runs super fast and runs around everybody else and just goes and sometimes he he when he was first learning how to use that superpower he he crashed into stuff and he didn't know how to use it right and he's like yeah i remember that she's like you know what that's the way it is with your mind it's, it's just working so much faster. And because everybody else sometimes is, it, things can be going super slow and you're going so fast that you just don't know how to control it yet. And we're working to get you to figure out how to control that and how to, how to be able to do that the way that God wants you to. He lit up, his face lit up. Yeah, I'm, I can do that. I'm, I'm a superhero. He goes, so you're saying I'm like Flash. <laughs> <laughs> And she said, yep, that's it, buddy. You're like Flash. <laughs> Listen, here's my point. How do we deal with that? How do we deal with that? Except 
to the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't. We don't. I, there's been many times that I've simply said, I, I don't know, God. I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to deal with that issue. I don't know how I'm supposed to help them. I don't know. They're my kids. I love them tremendously. God, how do I help them? How do I, how do, I do that? It's only only through the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, if I can challenge you with anything today, listen, we cannot face the challenges that, that, that we have to face in this world, in this life, unless we know the person of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, Jason, you know, that you're, you're, you're the pastor, you, you know, you're, you're supposed to be able to do that, you know, what, what about us average folk? Listen, I'm just average, let me tell you first of all, okay? But, let me give you an example of someone here in our church that experienced this recently. Okay? We know that, that recently uh, someone in our church family dealt with a loss. Um, there was, a, there was a, a wreck. You probably heard about it on I-70. And, and um, uh, one of our family members lost a family member. Okay? Very tough situation. Very tough. In the midst of that going on, uh, Stephanie Fugate, sitting here in the front row, was nearby over uh, at Walmart, saw the sirens, or heard the sirens, saw the lights flashing and all this, and something in her spirit just said, you know what, we need to go over there. We need to go over there. Her and her daughter were together, and, and, and not putting her daughter down or anything, that daughter was just like, hey, you just, you just, you just want to see what's going on. You're just being nosy, mom. No, 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 no. There's something, there's something in my spirit that's telling me I need to go over there. I don't know what it is. I, don't know what it is. I, sh- I sh- feel like I need to go over there. As they pull in, right in front of them was, was Kendra and her mom. And it was Kendra's sister that was in the car accident. And Stephanie was right there to be able to take the kids and help them and watch over them and kind of keep them away from what was going on while, while they were dealing with the, the situation at hand. Listen, how does that happen except through the power of the Holy Spirit? That's the Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts. You see, we have a spirit, and the Holy Spirit wants to speak to our spirit to say, listen, here's, here's, what, here's what you need to do. you got a difficult decision uh, that, that you need to make. You, you, you're making a move, or you're, you're, you're moving in your job situation, or you got a financial challenge. Listen, hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit to know how to deal with those things is vital in living out who God has called us to be. We got to get to know the person of the Holy Spirit, and we all, we all, can do that. It's possible for each and every one of us. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, I thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the message today. Hope it was a blessing to you. Our prayer is that through this series, you'll come to know the person of the Holy Spirit in a greater way than ever before. If you would like to partner with us through a financial gift, or if you would like for us to pray with you in any way for anything, go to grainvalley.church, and there you'll find the opportunity to be able to connect with us in that way. Pray that you have an incredible week. Hope to see you again next Sunday.